Early Tesla investor Ibrahim Al Husseini joins us this morning, founder at Full Cycle. Try to process the news that we did get, Ibrahim, um, and maybe to some degree the stock's reaction on the near term news and the prospect of longer term news. What was your takeaway? Good morning, Carl. Good to be back. Um, so, yeah, it was an underwhelming announcement. There was a lot of expectations for the stock and for the technology that they were going to announce. And really, if you boil it down, what the announcement was, it was that, you know, there's a promising technological breakthrough that may or may not happen between now and the next three years if all these 19 stars align. And I think the market was expecting something immediate and something transformative. And I so appreciate Elon's desire to produce a greener, more recycled, uh, higher density battery. But it seems like the technological breakthrough towards that are still speculative. So the market reacted negatively, negatively to that news. Right. The bull cases that we're seeing built today um, say that if you were to be able to cut the cost by 56 percent in three years, it would have enormous uh, ramifications on volume, implications for margins, and uh, ostensibly positive for the stock. But I think Kramer said it best this morning. If you were a believer going into the event, you remain a believer. And if you weren't, maybe you're not. Fair enough. I mean, it's absolutely true that the battery technologies worldwide, Teslas and everybody else's, will continue to get cheaper and better. So that's a given. That's just you know, the all all laws that support technological breakthroughs support that theory. So that's that's already baked into the price. You know, all the disruptive capacity of the technology is already baked into the price. You know, I mean, there's everything else is just, you know, sexy brand, Elon cult personality, who, of course, deserves all the credit in the world. But even he admitted before the stock split that it was too expensive. So this is all, you know, the disruptive uh, potential is already baked. Ibrahim, I think we may have lost him, but Carl, I thought it was interesting. He just said that the disruptive technology already baked in, but a lot of folks are looking at the fact that Tesla is bringing that technology in-house. Oh, Ibrahim, are you with us again? Yeah, I'm right here. Can you, can you see and hear me? Yes, you cut out for a moment. Let me pick up where you left then. You said that the disruptive technology is already baked in. But as I was just saying to Carl, the fact that Tesla is aiming to bring battery production in-house, sort of streamline that supply chain, that supply channel like other tech companies have done, does that build into the bull case, especially three to five years out? I mean, let me quote Elon when I when when I say that he said it's, what is it, a thousand to 10,000 times harder to build the machines that make the machines that make batteries. So this is, you know, if anybody can do it, Tesla can. But unfortunately, and I hate to be down uh, on Elon, but, you know, he usually does not always meet the timelines of which he expects technology to be <laughs> market ready. So, you know, that, yeah, it, but it, it'll happen. <laughs> it, I don't know if it'll happen anytime soon. Ibrahim, he can be modest on occasion. He said that he thought there was, you know, little chance that SpaceX and Tesla would ever succeed when he cashed out of his shares of PayPal. Is this another case of him being modest? I mean, he's already beating the competition. Where does Battery Day place Tesla in terms of that competition with Volkswagen and others coming out with EV autos over the next few years? Not just one year, but a few years further than that. So that's the biggest issue is uh, Volkswagen. You know, Volkswagen, after their issue with Dieselgate, you know, had all this lead time to start uh, pivoting towards EVs. So they have all this technology, all this momentum, all these models that are going to be entering the market, which, you know, some of them already have, and more and more as the years to come. So Tesla's had this entire landscape to itself, and now it's going to have to start competing with these legacy players who also have a lot of money a lot of experience building really great interiors. People are used to them. They love some of these brands. You know, it's a it's going to be a lot harder just to, you know, it's going to be a lot harder to compete when there's a lot more yeah. choices for consumers in the market. 